Hi everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, we are just past the middle of October, which means Halloween is not too far off. So I thought we'd have a little fun this week and talk about some spooky satellites. First off, what is a satellite? Well, there are natural satellites like moons, and then there are artificial or man-made satellites such as communication and weather satellites. They can orbit planets or even things like asteroids. Now, Earth has one natural satellite, which we simply call the moon, and we have thousands and thousands of artificial satellites, which include things like the Hubble Space Telescope and the International Space Station. But speaking of the moon, perhaps you've heard that this month there's going to be a micro blue Halloween moon. What does that mean? Well, if we take the term blue moon, the term has a semi-complicated origin story, which from what I understand basically boils down to somebody misinterpreting a naming scheme in an almanac back in the 1930s. And somehow throughout the years, it evolved into a term that refers to the second full moon to occur in a month's time. So we had a full moon on October 1st, and we're about to have another one at the end of the month on the 31st, which is Halloween. Okay, so what about the term micro? Well, because of the shape of the moon's orbit around the Earth, sometimes it's a little bit closer to the Earth than on average, and sometimes a little bit farther away. And it just so happens that on Halloween this month, the moon's going to be at its furthest point from the Earth, which means it'll be a teensy-weensy bit smaller in the sky. Just a teeny tiny bit. Honestly, the difference is so slight that you're probably not going to notice the difference between the micro-moon and a regular average size moon. But regardless of what you want to call the moon, it's gorgeous to look at, so just go out and enjoy it. So let's go see where it's going to be on Saturday, October 31st at 8 p.m. We are looking towards the southeast from right here in Columbia, South Carolina, so that we can see a little bit of the eastern horizon as well as the southern horizon. So there is our full moon rising. And I personally think it's really cool that we're going to have a full moon on Halloween. I think it definitely contributes to the ambiance of the evening. Very fitting for Halloween. Although I've heard it argued that it's eerier to have a completely dark sky without any moon at all. So I don't know, what do you think? Is it spookier to have a full moon out on Halloween or no moon at all? Or maybe just a little bit of a moon? Well, regardless of what your preference is, this Halloween we get a full moon which will dominate the skyscape throughout the night with its very bright light. Normally, around this time of year, I like to point out some deep sky objects, um, some of the fainter constellations that kind of fit in with the Halloween theme, but then I thought, Honestly, that moon is so bright, you're really not going to see much else besides the brightest objects. So why not go out into the solar system and see if we can find some spooky satellites around other planets, starting with the fiery reddish-orange Mars right here. I think it's appropriate for Mars, the god of war, to be out on Halloween. And Mars is orbited by two small misshapen moons called Phobos and Deimos, which means fear and terror or dread. There's nothing particularly terrifying about these moons, however, unless you have a deathly fear of potatoes. So here's what they look like. Phobos is on the left, only 14 miles wide at its widest point, and Deimos on the right, only about eight miles wide at its widest point. That's compared to our own moon, which is over 2,000 miles across. So really, these moons are nuggets of moons. Tater tots, if you will, since they look like little potatoes to me. But we will go ahead and pull away from Mars there. 
come out a little bit more, pan our gaze over towards the south, where we come to our next planet, Saturn. Now Saturn has dozens and dozens of moons, uh, approximately 80 of them. I think the one that best fits Halloween is this one right here. So this is Mimas, and yes, it is a moon. But does it remind you of anything? Especially for you Star Wars fans out there. So Mimas is about 200 miles across, but its most distinguishing feature is that 80 mile wide crater there, which really makes this moon look just like the Death Star from Star Wars, which turns out is a total coincidence. But I think it's really, really kind of strange and unsettling that we do have a Death Star shaped moon just hanging out out there in the solar system. And we will pull away from Saturn, go right next door to the planet Jupiter. Now, just like Saturn, Jupiter has dozens and dozens of moons, about 80 moons. These are the four brightest ones, the Galilean moons. They're nicely um, lined up right now at eight o'clock this evening. And actually, if we zoom in a little bit closer, the great red spot just happens to be facing us at this time, which is also kind of neat. I don't really think any of Jupiter's moons are particularly spooky, but if I had to choose one, I'd go with this one right here, which is Io. Io is a moon that is completely covered in active volcanoes, which I suppose is pretty terrifying. It's a very tortured landscape, a big, angry mess. And here's what that looks like. It does not look like a nice place at all. It looks quite dreadful. And we'll pull away from Jupiter here. Now, even though you can't see it because it is so very far away and so very dim, between Jupiter and Saturn, just in between them here in this general direction lies the dwarf planet Pluto. Now I think it's very appropriate for Pluto to be up in the sky for Halloween because everything about Pluto has to do with the underworld. Now you can't see Pluto with your own eyes, you can't even see it with binoculars or a telescope. Not even the Hubble Space Telescope can get a decent picture of it because it's so far away so very dim. The best pictures we have of Pluto and its moons come from the New Horizons spacecraft, which flew by in 2015. So let's take a look at Pluto's moons. The one on the left is Charon or Charon, and it's the largest moon. It does kind of look ominous there with that big crack across the, um, the middle. Now, Charon represents the ferryman who ferried the souls of the dead across the river Styx to the underworld. But Pluto has four other moons. One is named Styx, after the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. Then there's Kerberos, which is named after the three-headed dog that guards the entrance to the underworld. Then there's Nyx, named after the goddess of night or darkness. And then finally Hydra, named after a multi-headed beast also associated with the underworld. So like I said, I think it's really fitting for Pluto and pals there to just be kind of lurking in the darkness in between Jupiter and and Saturn. So sometimes I think it's neat to, even though you, if you can't see something with your own eyes, if you just know where to look in the sky, just to kind of know what's out there when you look in that general direction. It's still neat to know what you're kind of looking at. But I will reset our gaze here so it's similar to what it was when we started. And I hope that you'll go out and enjoy some of these things up in the sky. Definitely enjoy the moon and 
go out, check out those planets, and maybe think about some of the spooky or not so spooky moons that orbit them. Maybe you want to go to some various NASA sites, check out the other moons that orbit Saturn and Jupiter. Like I said, there's dozens and dozens of them, and maybe you'll decide that a completely different moon fits into the Halloween theme a little bit better besides the ones that I've chosen here. Um, and then maybe while you're out doing some moon and planet gazing, just give Pluto a little wave out there. Well, thank you so much for joining me here with this special spooky satellite edition of our virtual sky tour. Don't forget that the planetarium is open at the State Museum. You can check out our show schedule at scmuseum.org. We do have some special shows for the month of October that are a lot of fun. And as always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a safe and wonderful Halloween if you are celebrating. If not, just have a beautiful evening. And don't forget to click below to like and subscribe. Thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.